Yes, if the answer is yes, I want you to listen carefully. I want you to type in the comments. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. So, our one big message is this. Jesus wants you in His team. I want you to type that down. I want you to tell somebody beside you, touch that person beside you. Say, Jesus wants you in His team. Now, the way I'll begin my message is through a parable. Not Jesus' parable, not a parable from the Bible, but my own concoction is a my crazy parable. Once upon a time, in one city, there was only one hospital. And this hospital in this city was the best of the best. It was like a five-star hotel. <laughs> this, this hospital, this hospital was like a, was, was this, you know, fully equipped, fully, fully high-tech, modern hospital and uh, but there was a problem the problem was this you know you, you might think oh that's great no no the problem was it was owned by rich and famous doctors who only accepted rich and famous friends and if you were not powerful and privileged they will shoo you away but one day there was this great and legendary doctor from another place visits the city and makes a decision I will build a new hospital in this city and it will welcome everyone. It may not be as classy as that one, <laughs> that, that, that five-star hospital. No, this is going to be a simple, nice hospital, but it's going to welcome everyone, especially the poor. Now, he had a problem. All the doctors in that city were already working for the first hospital. So what he did was he rec recruited people, ordinary people, to be trained as his doctors. He had his own medical school, etc. So he posts in his Facebook page, wanted new doctors, everybody welcome to apply. And so the applicants were wild. I mean, you've got BPO agents and sales agents, salespeople and taxi drivers applying. You've got some shady characters who applied, you know, like, like petty thieves and scammers and corrupt politicians started applying. And so, you know, they go through their interviews, etc. And he hires people, these ordinary folks and these people who did not have any qualifications. He hired, hired them, hired them. And, and then he brought them to his medical school. The doctors of the first hospital started ridiculing the entire thing, ridiculing this great doctor. And they told him, you know what? Don't build a regular hospital. Build a mental asylum because you need it. There's a loose screw in your brain. You're nuts. You're insane. What are you doing? Look at these people that you're going to be training as doctors. They're, 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 no, they don't have the qualifications. But he didn't mind them, and he kept on training them. And one of the things this great doctor did was in his medical school, he will not only teach medical stuff, he was also going to teach love, how to love. And one day, many years later, many of these applicants, students, etc., became doctors. And they were able to build this beautiful hospital that would welcome everybody, especially the poor. Now, I want you to know that this is a totally unrealistic story. No such thing can happen. But I'm using the lunacy of the story to tell you as an analogy of our Bible story today. Are you ready? Because in ancient Israel, there was only one spiritual hospital, the Temple of Jerusalem, that if you are spiritually sick and you want to be spiritually well, go to one place and one place only, the Temple of Jerusalem, the great holy Temple of Jerusalem. Here was the problem. Those who ran it, those who led it, were priests called Sadducees, and they were very wealthy, partly because they had a monopoly. It was, it was through cheating. They had a monopoly at the market stalls where they sold sacrificial animals. Now, this temple in Jerusalem, they, they had sacrifices of animals every day, every day. People would go there, buy, buy animals from the market stalls. The mon mon monopoly owned by the priest. And the prices were so jacked up, you know, he was, they, they were cheating the poor. Not only that, these Sadducees, these, these wealthy priests, they wanted to preserve their wealth. So what they did was they cooperated with the Roman Empire. That the conquerors cooperated, right? Meaning compromise. <laughs> and so enters the scene this new guy, Jesus. 
and he announces, I'm going to be building a new kingdom. O open, close parenthesis, uh, based on our analogy, he was going to build a new spiritual hospital. And yes, all the religious professionals were already working for the first for the first uh, hospital, for the first temple. I'm mixing up my words here. And uh, he started recruiting people into his team, ordinary people. He was not going to recruit preachers and pastors and priests. No, they were all working for the, for the temple already. He was going to recruit fishermen, Peter, Andrew, James, John. And the most scandalous recruit was a tax collector by the name of Matthew. Verse 9. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple, Jesus said to him. So Matthew got up and followed him. My dear friends, please understand, this is the most controversial, shocking thing you can ever imagine. Like people's jaws dropped when they saw Jesus go near this scoundrel, this guy, what? Recruiting him to be his disciple. What is happening here? Now, let, let, let me say this. Um, maybe you need to appreciate how scandalous this was. Let me give you a test. May I give you a test? Just answer this question. If you lived in ancient Israel, who would you prefer to be your next door neighbor? A. Pharisee. B. Tax collector. Choose. Before you choose, I'll give you a little background of these two guys. First, the Pharisee. Pharisees were not bad people. They, in fact, may be very nice neighbors. I mean, for crying out loud, they were law-abiding citizens. They were churchgoers. They prayed five times a day. They were Bible teachers. And so you can be sure of it. There would be no, they'd be quiet. Maybe accept the worship song that the wife will be listening to while she does her laundry. And no loud parties. No, 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 no. Just the, you know, pleasant, uneventful gatherings of other religious people and other religious friends who will be gathering there in his house. Nice, nice neighbor. The tax collector, there will be more disturbance. I want you to know that the tax collector was considered to be the worst sinner, one of the worst sinners in Israel. Why? Oh, by the way, you know, you go to any country, there is this general, you know, subtle dislike for a tax man, for a tax woman, for, for a tax collector. So this is not ordinary dislike, please. No, no, this was hatred. Hatred to the core of their being. They hated tax collectors. Two reasons. Number one, they were perceived to be lying, cheating bastards without a conscience. Now you might say, how, how, how could that perception come from? Where did that come from? It, 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 you, know, you need to know history, a little bit of historical detail. The Roman Empire, when they conquer a place, they will hire, they will, they will put first puppet governments and then they will hire tax collectors. The tax collectors, they, they had no salary. What they did was they have an agreed amount of money that they're supposed to turn over to the empire. Any money ab that they collect above that amount is theirs. So you can just imagine the grave abuses that would happen. You know, these tax collectors, they would just, they would just collect and collect and collect. And, and then their houses would be become bigger and they will get richer and they will, they will wear these fancy clothes, etc. And people will look at them and, and they'll say, my gosh, this guy is making a fortune out of people's misfortune. They, these guys have no conscience, so, so they hated them. Number two, the Jews were intensely nationalistic. And so these tax collectors, they were in cahoots with the enemy. And they were traitors. And so basically they represented the circus government that the Romans had installed there. And so they, they were the face of the sparse government, and, and, and so they hated him. He hated them um, with every bone of their body. Now, I want you to imagine that your neighbor was a tax collector, and you, you peek over the, your fence and you see them. There would be Roman soldiers going in and out because, hey, they're, 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 that, that's their protection. 
And, and so one morning you wake up, and there's this commotion, you peek through your window and you see this guy that you know, a fisherman, he sells fish to you. He's begging for his life, he's begging, you know, because he could not pay his taxes and the tax collector with a Roman soldier beside, beside them, you know, you, you, you don't have money to pay, you know, you, you, owe, you, owe, you owe the government, you know, and the, the fisherman says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm not. And so the tax collector says, you know, why don't you sell your land? Why didn't you sell your boat? You know, you, and, so, and so the fisherman just kneels down and says, please give me more time, give me more time. And so the tax collector says, okay, okay, but I'm going to give you a stern warning. You better pay by this date or else. You know, you, and so you see that. And, and, and so that, but that's not, you have to contend also with his loud parties. The tax collector, because he's considered you know, part of the, the, the bad people, he, he hangs out with bad people. So he's got these loud parties with with drinking and cursing and the, the seedy characters of the underbelly of society would go in to these parties and you see them, other tax collectors, and you see, you see, yeah, some of these guys, you see prostitutes coming in, you, you see pagans, you see idol, idol worshippers go in into these parties. So, my dear friends, I'm going to ask you this question again. Who do you want to be your next door neighbor? A Pharisee. B, tax collector. And I will not blame you. Most of you would probably say, you know what, to be more practical, I'm going to get the Pharisee as my next door neighbor. Jesus, if you pick B, tax collector, not only as his neighbor, he recruited him to his core team. My dear friends, I, I need to preach to you today. And uh, before I pass on the baton to... to uh, the second part of this preaching, which is the juicier part, um, I, I need to pause for a while and, and, and tell you that Jesus is still recruiting his team. He's still building this spiritual hospital that will reach out to, to those that feel the broken and the wounded and the poor and, and, and the sinners. He, he's still forming this core team and he wants you to be in his team. Jesus is saying, come follow me. And I know most of our response is me, me to be part of your team, Jesus. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not deserving Jesus. You know, if you know me and you know, you know what, I, what, what, not me, Jesus. I was 12 years old when Jesus recruited me to his team. And if you knew me when I was 12 years old, you would say, why would Jesus pick this guy? My grades were awful. When I was in grade two, I started failing in school. I had 72 in math. That was my grade in math. My mom panicked that she got a math tutor. I like telling the story. She got a math tutor. And by the end of the school year, from 72, my grade went to 75. Woohoo! My mom was so happy. Not because I learned anything in math, but because the tutor that my mom hired was also my math teacher. So. Never mind. <laughs> I had bad grades. My classmates, some of them had bad grades too, but they were so good in sports. They were good in basketball and baseball and soccer. I was, I was bad in sports. I was so bad. And so there, I was not good in class. I was not good in sports. And then I was, I had no money. My mom would give me 50 centavos a day. And I could, I could only buy biscuits in the cafeteria. My classmates had five pesos a day. And, they, and so I felt so so bad. I felt, I, felt, I said to myself, you know, I, I was bad in my grades, I was bad in sports, I, was, I had no money. And then I was ugly. I was ugly. Emphasis on past tense, of course. Uh, my classmates called me tip for tip up long and ref, not, not, not for referee, for refugee. I, I, I looked so scrawny and thin and and but you see, when I was 12 years old, when people around me did not see anything good in me, and when I did not see anything good in me, Jesus passed by, and Jesus saw wonderful things in me that I never saw in myself. And He recruited me. And He said, follow me, bro. Join my team. Let's change the world. And that's that's what I did. I said, yes. And Jesus is recruiting you. Jesus wants you in his team. Will you say yes?
I hope so. I really hope so. Thank you so much.